Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite methods of factoring, and that is a difference of squares. Now, if you were following along with that kind of factoring map we've talked about before, you know a difference of squares is going to be your primary factoring method after you've taken out any greatest common factor and you only have two terms. So this is the criteria for doing difference of squares. It must be only two terms, aka a binomial, and all terms, everything in the binomial must be a perfect square. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like. Let's say I have something like this. This is kind of our very common version of a difference of squares polynomial. x squared minus 16. So the idea is we have a two-term binomial and every term here is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square. We know that. Let's kind of ignore that minus sign in front of it. I know that kind of throws off the, the math, but 16 is a perfect square. And then we have x squared as well. Now that one may be a little bit more difficult to think about. Is x squared a perfect square? We don't usually think about perfect squares in the terms of variables. However, x squared is the same thing as x times x, right? It's what you get whenever you multiply x by itself. So yeah, it is a perfect square. It's kind of a weird thought, but any variable squared is a perfect square. So let's go ahead and see how we would factor this. Just like all our other methods of factoring, it's going to turn into two different binomials. So I'm going to go ahead and format my answer right now. Binomial 1 and binomial 2. Now, in these binomials, what we're going to see is actually the square roots of our terms from the original problem, from the original binomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to square root each of these and put them in these spots in the binomial. You'll see what I mean here. What's the square root of x squared? Well, that's x. So I'm going to put that in the first plus spot in each binomial. What's the square root of 16? Well, that's 4. So I'm going to put that in the second spot of each binomial. Now you may be wondering, what goes in between them though? We need a sign in there, right? When solving difference of squares, your binomials are going to have opposite signs, meaning one of them is going to say plus, the other one is going to say minus. Just like that, x plus 4, x minus 4. And then we're done. We factored it. Now we are going to go over one more example, or maybe two more examples in this video, just so we can get a full idea of what this is. And also, I'm realizing now, I probably should mention one other thing in our criteria. It's kind of assumed, because it's in the name, but um, the binomial, uh, or the terms in the binomial, must be subtracting. So like we have this, x squared minus 16, that fact that we're subtracting 16 is actually critical for us. You'll notice the name quite literally describes what this is, a difference or a subtraction problem of squares or perfect squares x squared and 16 in this case, right? It very much describes exactly what we're working with. So if you ever see something like this, x squared plus 16, it may be very easy to look at that and say, well, those are both perfect squares and there's only two terms, so I might be able to do this version of factoring. Although you can't. They must be subtracting terms. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this problem and we're gonna do two more examples before we end the video here. Let's say we have 9x squared plus 
36. Now let's not do 36. Let's go 25. Y squared. So then what we want to do is we want to make sure this fits all our criteria. Do we only have two terms? Absolutely. Are they subtracting? No. <laughs> I wrote that wrong. My bad. They weren't subtracting. So that means we couldn't have done that if I wouldn't have fixed that mistake in my writing. And then is everything a perfect square? So you'll notice this one has a little more to it than the other one. It has a few more variables, a few more whole numbers. If we ask ourselves, do each of these have, uh, does each whole number or each variable, is it a perfect square? If it is, we can do this. Is nine a perfect square? It is. X squared, great. We said any variable that's squared is a perfect square. 25, absolutely, and Y squared. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and write my binomials. And we established the fact earlier that one of them is always gonna be adding, the other one's always gonna be subtracting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write that in right at the start. Plus and a minus in the middle of those because I know I'm always gonna have a, a one that's adding, one that's subtracting. And then I'm just gonna find my square roots of every term and put them in the same place that their squared version started. So 9, its square root is 3. x squared, its square root is x. 25 is 5. And y squared begin, becomes y. The exact same thing is going to be what I write in this second one, with the only difference being that minus sign right there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. 3x and 5y. If we wanted, we could actually foil those back together. What do you think we'd end up with? Yeah, we'd end up right back there. You can foil those together just to check the work if you want to, just to visualize how the, exactly this works. But trust me, we'll get back to that beginning problem. Like I said, we're gonna do one last problem. I'm gonna write it up here real quick. Let's say, thirty-six x squared minus eighty-one y squared. When we look at a problem like this and we think about factoring, what do we always need to recognize? we always must take out any greatest common factor at the very beginning of the problem. I know, I intentionally wrote this so that we have a greatest common factor. Because again, anytime we're factoring, greatest common factor is the very first thing we do before even addressing anything else. You'll notice that in both of these terms, what do we have? Yeah, they're both divisible by nine. So we can actually take out that greatest common factor of nine and then we're left with 4x squared minus 9y squared. Do we still have a difference of squares binomial here left over after taking out that 9? We do. 4 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square, as is y squared. And they're subtracting exactly what we want them to be doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my binomial versions of this. So we're gonna split it into two binomials, one with addition happening, the other with subtraction happening. And I'm gonna square root every one of my terms. Four square roots to become two. We will then have x, the square root of nine is three, and then the square root of y squared is y. We'll have the exact same stuff here with just that minus sign, 2x and 3y. And then we'll go ahead and drop down that nine, right? That nine is still written with our answer. All right, guys, this is difference of squares. 
If you have any questions about it, feel free to drop them below and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.